on one morning I'm seated in a building I'm standing in an old dilapidated building I think I've never shared that story in Kenya and then Jesus enters that building and walks to the corner of that building there were two apostles one of them was Peter I knew them there was a knowledge in me that I knew them he hugged one of them shook the hand of the other old building he came through looked at me again and smiled as he had entered disappeared so I'm screaming I said Jesus why have you ignored me and he disappears and I turn and I enter this building and these two apostles were not there anymore and a light shines through a small window it had the background of gold and in it were precious stones and out of it was a glorious light shining on my face I said God what is this sight it took me seven months praying fasting in some of those days what did this mean what did this mean the man who appeared to me in my first vision to take me through the lineages of anointings came back and this time he was on television I'm walking through my father's living room and he says somebody's watching me and you have questions on windows you saw a light coming through the window and that said the Lord that the window means revelation the voice of God spoke clearly that day that I confirmed my presence by hugging one I shook another man's hand I will always confirm my presence with you through the spirit of revelation I will speak through you through you things that are older than you greater than you of greater language than now he starts to explain to me from that day when I start teaching the power moves the presence of God intensifies every time I continue teaching I don't need to pray I just need to teach truth that is why when I have preached truth I don't need to pray for a sick man I just need to call them that's my nature that's 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 my design I can't say that everybody's gonna be like me but I'm simply trying to explain my knowledge in the mystery like Paul says and I discovered my course from then I knew my course I knew the things that provoke power in my life I know them I'm sleeping in the night Jesus wakes me up he wakes my spirit I'm still in the, in the flesh sleeping he taught a whole chapter of a verse and scripture I had never read after a few hours I wake up I ran to the Bible and lo and behold the very chapter and scripture I remember very well and when I open it it's the exact portion of scripture I had never read it but he had spent two hours speaking to me so I discovered there's actually a God who can teach somebody receive it I just I discovered there was a God who can actually talk to you like a teacher talks to a student and I say God you are real and I remember one of those days I'm driving I'm bypassing a very famous hospital Mulago and he comes and sits here he says I want to talk to you about this and I'm weeping through people seeing me in the jam crying they're saying why is this young man crying people are like what's wrong with him I'm weeping because the master is here speaking I can hear him speak Jesus is real he's real
whatever you regard to be visible God has deliberated that he's going to make it visible for you in the name of Jesus this is why conferences like Rama Feast come to awaken those portals to break forth to waken up those wombs and plant something to open the eyes of somebody to see Jesus Christ like you have never seen him before he becomes an experience that you're not only speaking because you read a good book no you're speaking because you have experienced the God of that book And I said, God, how will they believe? He said, wait what I'll do through you. I'll vindicate everything. The spirit of godliness is a vindicated spirit. Do you hear that? Such is the confidence that we have toward him. That everything you do must and should be vindicated by the spirit. He calls that the great mystery of godliness. He says he was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of the angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on the world, received up in glory. He was justified in the spirit, vindicated by the spirit. Whatever the Lord will show you, he will prove himself. Today I came to talk to those who doubted their visions. I came to those who God opened ears long ago, told you things, but something came in the middle here and started confusing the voices. And now you no longer believe the very God you believed when you were 12, the very God who opened your eyes when you were 13. He is, you don't know how to connect to him anymore. When was the last time you actually locked up yourself in a room and started to worship God and you were really taken? Not because you want to, but even when you are fighting, you found yourself taken to a place. When was the last time you felt a certain glory on your life that awakened a God kind of conviction in your spirit? And not because you are transacting with the mere things, but because you've walked enough with God to differentiate the graces. But you have that time with him enough for him to launch you deeper. Because this I have seen with many ministers. There's a point we get and we get so laxed and complacent because the glories around us carry enough provisions to sustain and preserve what men carry already of our image in Christ and we cannot progress beyond that because those glories are enough for men to think of us in a certain light and believe God for the miracle but we ourselves are not really building ourselves up that we place a demand on them but we are not on the altar with them that when you were poorer you used to seek God when there was no money, you used to seek God. When nobody yet knew you, you used to serve God distinctly. But now when the glory came, the comforts came also. God says, don't lose the wonder. Don't lose the wonder. There's still more in God. There is still more in God. There's still more. My time is up. I honestly live with a fear. The fear of how much has been given us and how much were we really able to access through understanding? And what would it look like when a man comes to the full understanding? That perfect man, the measure of the stature of Jesus Christ. What does that man look like? 
no, no, put the titles aside. Call me apostle or not. But there's that man. The Mount of Transfiguration. Matthew says, Peter, John, and James are on the mountain. And then Moses and Elijah are talking to Jesus. And then Peter comes to them. Mark says the same thing, same narrative. John says the same narrative. But when it comes to Luke, and I want you to read Luke's account, this man who understood the order of things. This is the last I'll, I'll finish. Please give me a few minutes. Thank you. Luke chapter 9, verses 29. Mark, Luke, Mark, sorry, Matthew, all of these guys went there. They carried the meaning of that experience through what they were told and what they picked. But listen to what Luke picked. Luke says in verses 29, as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistening. And behold, two men talked with him who were Moses and Elijah. Like Luke and Mark say, but like, like sorry, Mark and Matthew say. And listen to what Luke says. Luke says, who appeared in glory and spoke of his disease, which was about to accomplish. He was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Do you understand what I'm saying? Give me the New Living Translation. Who appeared in glory and they were speaking about his exodus from this world which is about to be fulfilled in Jerusalem. Luke picked something. Mark and Matthew and John never saw. They all carry the account that the Lord Jesus' face was shining and he talked with Elijah and Moses. But what was spoken, they never knew. But there's a man who leaned in. There's a man who leaned in enough as of whether he went to ask or it's the question of how he heard that it was spoken before the rest but the other didn't pick that line but Luke heard it and the man of understanding knew that it was expedient to even tell us what Moses and Elijah were speaking. This is the right that I carry to go to the Christ and ask him when they brought that woman caught in adultery you wrote on the ground what did you write? Am I communicating to somebody? People are going to be quick to say, this is heresy. How do you know what was written? Oh, they are glorious ones that have not only understood the liberties that are available for them to access it, but some people even know what was written. And you know that these are the liberties that are hard to expend yourself among men who might never understand you. That if I tell a man I actually read, they'll argue. Understand why Paul says that uh, I will not, I know it's boastful of me. And then he struggles to speak of his experiences because he fears that either the indifferent might misunderstand him and follow familiar spirits or the assumedly very mature might judge him and disqualify him in the course and therefore the man keeps his testimonies but this is what I know for sure that the moment you start walking such places something starts to vindicate your ministry because it's the responsibility of God to introduce you because in essence, you reveal him. If, if you have understood this equation, now the conversation of the template has begun. Because it means we are going to see things men have never seen before. This thing called eye has not seen. Ear has not had. We are going to hear things Yes, we are on the same altar as God was speaking, but I heard deeper. Oh! Somebody's ears open!
my time is up but this is my prayer really God is moving we are going to enter a season of experiences and I'm talking about balanced experiences everything I saw when I was 18 and 19 I'm seeing right now in Fanero where Fanero is is a 19 years old vision not where I'm at now where I'm at is very far I'm living by a template that was drawn by the son of God himself I know my days I know my beginning and I know my end I even know that I will live heaven I will live for heaven I know it's not a mystery this is the readiness that we should all carry and stop guessing around whether this is right or no we have to mature to that place where we can actually experience him for ourselves that you might experience the love of God that passes mere knowledge without understanding that's what the Bible says read he says that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves through experience the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience that you may be filled through all your being and to all the fullness of God that you may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body holy filled and flooded with God himself that it's possible for you, Reverend Julia, Julian, to carry the richest measure of the presence of God. That's more than revival. That's more than revival, Brother Mwangi. When you carry the fullest measure of the divine presence. We are entering seasons where men are going to come to lame people. And the lame will see them and walk. Hey! Am I communicating with somebody? You're going to think of somebody sick and the tumor will leave their body because hey, hey, your concern for that individual is a prayer and you carry enough force and power to command the presence of healing until we can tell our generation that this is possible we have not begun yet now open your mouth and let's speak to God Just two, three minutes only. Because there's other programs coming. Tell God, open my eyes. I want to see you. I want to experience you. I'm without excuse. I know it's already given. Now help me know how to hear. How to receive it. Put the principles and patterns that are necessary in my life. There's somebody who might say, I've never received a vision. That's okay. <laughs> Salvation is an experience. And in a few minutes I have tonight, I feel the liberty and grace to pray that may God release visions for you right now to see your assignment. May God take you through a journey to see the things you missed. And may he open your ears to hear what you missed. Paradise! Prophets are rising. Apostles are rising. Teachers are rising. Evangelists are rising. The presence of God is here. Yield to God. Just yield. Yield to Him. Yield to Him. Yield to Him. Tell Him, God, take me to a place I've never been before. And without excuse, show me, Lord.
no one Jesus there is no one darling there is no one Jesus there is no one else like you no one Jesus there is no darling there is no Jesus, there is no one else like you. like we have never been before open our eyes to see what must be seen we strip ourselves of all we know and desire to tap in things we have never known physically because you've told us that they are available for us with you and exercise himself in such liberties many did not believe Paul but how is it that we believe Paul's revelation because he saw the invisible he saw the invisible Is somebody God is opening your eyes to see your ministry you're seeing yourself in a stadium it's not last this is not last this is real it's happening right now somebody's eyes opening you're seeing yourself give answers to governments touching their financial connect turmoil You're seeing yourself building industries and educating millions. You see yourself on a road going to heal the sick and raising the dead. May God open your eyes and clarify where you missed. And for those who saw, I pray in the name of Jesus and may you receive the strength. stand in the office of a midwife to call out those anointings that have been stale and stagnated I decree and I declare this is the season this is the year this is the time you cannot be healed there are people here who are nobodies fist is the beginning of a journey where you will have to run away from the attention of men because of the glory anointing and mandate God has placed on your life receive it somebody somebody say God show me my lineage show me my pattern Show me my course which I have in Christ so I don't mix things in me bring a clarity of course and purpose that I will know what to follow and the voices that connect to my line this is important because there is somebody lost because you're seeking in the places where your mandate is not there are people standing in wrong offices 
you are ordained in a wrong office you are ushered in a wrong anointing nothing opens to you because you're never truly defined by God himself and this is the journey and mandate that begins the clarity of your purpose may God himself speak to you thank you Lord Jesus if you're sick in your body receive your healing now receive your healing if you came with a swelling it disappears now if you are crippled whether you're in a wheelchair or with a clutch you just walk if you came with any aid you just drop it and walk in the name of Jesus because the vindication of the spirit is available to affirm all truth in Christ if you came with any bondage God is delivering you witchcraft has no power over you in the name of Jesus father we submit ourselves to you to take us places show us reveal to us that when we return back next year there will be an evidence that the truth worked in our lives from today we're going to behold the invisible we're going to see things that cannot be seen we're going to experience a God like has never been experienced before because it's already in our inheritance and given a fall now it's to yield submit pray and seek his face that the manifestation of those things will be sure in the physical realm if Africa can understand this we're not going to be limited Spirit of God says let's continue in prayer let's continue in prayer the Spirit of God says just a few more minutes 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 a few more minutes something is happening something is happening I sense it something is happening 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 the Spirit of God is flowing just a few more minutes if you're sick in your body your miracle happens now now if you're next to somebody with a wheelchair clutch tell them walk we don't even need to pray about that it's done swellings are disappearing right now somebody has been feeling a swelling in your right side of your stomach God heals you now somebody had a swelling in your breast your right breast God is healing you now spirits of death I rebuke you early death we rebuke you Marine spirits, Magini, we arrest you right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. 
you're destroyed in the name of Jesus there are people who have been saying I've been struggling to see in the spirit realm receive that supernatural sight receive that supernatural sight supernatural supernatural revelational insight is settling on somebody you're going to see things in the word like you have never imagined you're going to hear the voice in a clarity like you have never imagined receive it in the name of jesus there's somebody god is taking you to a place in the spirit realm and i see that the instruction of your calling and mandate receives that pure clarity that you will testify one day and say i was in rema and that is when god told me exactly what he wanted of me witchcraft has no place in your life <laughs> all manner of witchcraft is destroyed in the name of Jesus I raise my faith with every pastor who has believed God for growth growth those faithful men and women who are toiling night and day and have sacrificed even the school fees of their children abandon those great jobs to serve you let this be the season lord for them to experience such supernatural growth in their personal ministries to the glorification of your name whatever is required for readiness whether it's wisdom or revelation or experience give it in the name of jesus because there are men here and women whose hearts are truly only sold out to you lord that it's easy to judge them but honestly they are doing the best they know how father visit our ministries let us see such supernatural experiences and exploits let us see power like we have never seen before let us close services and people refuse to go back home because the presence on our altars captivates them to stay and linger for the bible says they shall come and say let us go with you for the lord is with you may the secret of god set on your life so distinctly as it settled on job for the bible says when i went out in the gates and when i sat my seat in the city that means he possessed the gates and the thrones of israel may you not only possess the gates of your nation but the thrones thereof the powers the principles and laws that command and foster change may you be behind, be behind every growth every transformation of your nation every progress of your people may your name be mentioned on the tables of advancement and advantage when they are looking for an answer when they are looking for a solution may they turn to the church in the name of jesus christ may god give you such wisdom and experience that they will not ignore your counsel Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give him a mighty hand of praise.